Setting up a show file is one of the most challenging parts of starting to VJ. It could feel a bit like having to build an instrument before you've learned how to play it, or even what it's supposed to sound like. But today I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques that I consider when building a show file so that you can go ahead and build one for yourself. First tip, keep it simple. Most of the issues I've had during performances come from overcomplicating my show file. I forget where things are, I have too many buttons and not enough fingers, and I'm having to think before I act. It's best to just focus on timing, good quality content, and a few impactful effects and controls. Tip number two, plan for your show. Not all shows are created equal, and not all show files work for every show. A lot of other MIDI mapping and show file tutorials will show you their way, but I want you to think through your show. Think of the flow and what you might need access to. Plan ahead for what you're going to need. For example, when I'm a house VJ at a festival, I need quick access to color controls. I'm improvising, I'm mixing stock content with various artist content, and I'm collaborating with lighting and lasers and other effects on the fly. When I'm working with a single artist, I may have locked in my colors for each song in advance, so I don't need color control at all. A lot of tutorials start out telling you to map your grid of buttons to the grid of clips in Resolume, which seems logical. They match up nicely, but I tend to use the mouse for selecting content. At the shows I'm doing, there's too many clips to map to buttons, the content is always new and changing, and I could never remember where anything was on the grid anyway. But again, if you're running a pre-planned artist set, or you use the same pre-organized decks all the time, you might want to map those buttons to clips or column triggers for easy access. I like to use decks for each of the artists I'm performing for at the festival to separate and organize their content. You might only use a single deck or you might use decks to separate the content packs that you have or separate phases of a longer show. Whatever you end up doing is totally fine. This is your show. Just think through ahead of time, think about what you might need access to, the flow of the show throughout the night, and set things up your way. Try things, practice, and revise as necessary so that it all makes sense for you. How are we doing so far? Are we overwhelmed yet? I hope not, but if you are, did you know I do one-on-one -on -one sessions? Check out the link in the description, book a session, and I'll answer all of your specific questions, guide you through demos, and give you personalized tips on whatever topic you're interested in. Check it out down below. All right, back to the tips. Let's talk Resolume. Inside Resolume, layer order matters. Layers stack from the bottom to the top. So use that. You might organize your content with backgrounds down on the bottom and overlays and alpha content stacking on top of that. You might want to use layers to stack in masks or effects. For my bass music shows, I like to think of layers as energy levels, like chill breaks and then build-ups and then drops on top of that. Another way to organize your content inside Resolume is with columns. Columns are a great way to organize clips that go together. You can trigger them all at once with a column trigger and then add or subtract them using faders. Columns can also be thought of as part of a timeline. If you know your set list in advance or even just the general flow of the music, you can start with column one, and move to the right as you go through the set. Moving through songs or sections of songs like breaks, builds, and drops. They even have these neat buttons where you can go next or previous column if you're super planned out. My next tip has to do with my favorite feature of Resolume and that is groups. Groups are your friend and they are a great way to add an extra level of organization and hierarchy. In the hierarchical stack, they are somewhere between layers and the full composition, 
and they allow you to add effects and controls to a group of layers separately from the rest of your layers in the composition. I like to have a main VJ group for my regular VJ content, another group for logos, and a third group for scenic content, frames, and things like that. This allows me to group and separate the different types of content in my show. I can add effects without glitching out my logos, or I can map different types of content in different ways. My next tip is about MIDI mapping. And this is where my first two tips really matter. Give yourself the control you need, but beware of giving yourself too many buttons to push. It can be really fun to map a ton of stuff in your bedroom, but when the music's going 174 BPM and suddenly you need to turn off 16 effects with 11 teen knobs, it can get a little hairy. Put things next to each other that you might need to one hand operate. Put things on opposite sides that you might be able to use two hands for. Play with different types and options in the mapping details. For example, piano mode versus toggle. Setting ranges to make things easier to control. And color code things whenever possible. Next, let's talk about effects. Effects order also matter. So play around with the order and see what makes sense. Do you want your color eyes on top of your strobe or the other way around? Does edge detect look better under shift RGB or on top? Also consider where those effects are placed in your composition, not just relative to each other. Whether they're on the composition, the group, the layer, or just the clip. Don't forget, you can also use automation and envelopes to save labor. Adding animation to different parameters so that you don't have to turn quite so many knobs to the beat. Finally, don't reinvent the wheel. Once you have a file that works for a certain type of show, save a stripped down version of that file to use as a template starting place for your next show of that type. I keep a standard festival show file ready as a starting point for my next festival gig. I always make some tweaks, but I never have to start from scratch. Most of my MIDI mapping stays the same, so I get used to where everything is over time and I'm not fumbling around. I also save presets for effects and things like that that I like and use often so that I can easily drop them in anywhere that I need them. You can also save decks and pull in decks from other compositions to reuse show after show. All right, now you have a few things to think about as you build your next show file. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.